Yep, it's another controversial one. But I'm not talking about pipework outside the building, like pipework connected to heat pumps. We're talking about pipework within what's called the thermal envelope, and specifically pipework that only contributes towards heating. And please note, this is only really relevant to condensing boilers and heat pumps. If you have any kind of other heat source, please ignore the following advice. <laughs> We're revising this because insulating pipework that only contributes towards heating within the thermal envelope often doesn't save any energy, and leaving it uninsulated can increase efficiency. Now the efficiency gain, if any, can be small, but this concept is worth going through just so we can explore things like what a thermal envelope is, mass flow rate, zoning, and how they relate to each other. So what is the thermal envelope? The thermal envelope is anywhere in the property where the main insulation is. Importantly though, it doesn't mean the boundary between inside the property and outside the property. Pipework can be inside the property, but not within the thermal envelope. The space under a suspended ground floor, for example, is within the property, but outside of the thermal envelope, as air can pass through that area through the air bricks inside the property and heat is insulated from reaching through into the property from the pipes. Any pipework in this area is outside the thermal envelope and should be fully insulated to direct all the generated heat to within the thermal envelope. Similarly, the eaves or loft space are within the property, but as they're above the loft insulation, are outside the thermal envelope. And any heating pipework there will not contribute towards heating the building as there's an insulative barrier in the way, the thermal envelope. So again, should be insulated as much as possible to keep all the generated heat within our system. However, the space housing the pipework that serves the radiators between floors, in voids, in boxing, in cupboards, and exposed pipework feeding radiators are all within the thermal envelope, so could contribute towards heating. The pipework that does not contribute towards heating is all the pipework from the heat source all the way up to the hot water cylinder and all the domestic hot water pipework from there as this will produce heat in summer when space heating is not needed so should be insulated as far as practical and I'd also argue the same for cold water supply. So I've said don't insulate but why? Well for three reasons. The first reason is to save time and money putting in the insulation. The second reason is the carbon impact of manufacturing and installing something that may not be needed at all. And the third reason is that by not insulating the pipework in these areas and leaving them open and exposed, you will maximize the surface area of the system allowing the heat into the building and could in fact potentially end up being able to run your system at a lower flow temperature, which improves condensing boiler efficiency and heat pump scop. Now I can already hear people saying, what happens to all that lost energy in the floor and wall voids? Well, the first thing to understand is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Heat lost into our boxing in doesn't just disappear, much like the heat in your oven after use, it ends up in the room as the two areas try to equalize in temperature. Hot moves to cold. So any heat lost into the floor voids and cupboards will find its way into the used rooms much more easily than getting through our thermal envelope into the outside world which is exactly what insulation is for. But likewise, any heat in a room will always try to move into cooler boxing in and floor voids before it leaves the envelope. Heat will always try to equalize temperature. So any radiators in those rooms will have to work slightly harder to account for that loss. This idea of the thermal envelope is exactly the same reason and theory that we generally say to minimize any zoning of your heating within a property. Now we cover this in much more detail in our video, why not to zone heat pumps? So we'll spare you the maths again, but when you turn off or insulate any emitters, the remaining on radiators have to work slightly hotter and less efficiently. And any energy is saved by the zoning is often more than accounted for by the added efficiency, particularly more so when it's really cold outside. And the theory of leaving pipework, boxing, and in voids in the floor uninsulated is exactly the same. Now the gains here could be absolutely minimal, 
But even if it makes no difference, it shows that we don't need to insulate pipework, making installs cheaper, quicker, and lowering the carbon impact. But what about getting the correct flow temperature to the radiator? And won't the flow and return differential across the heat source be too wide if we lose heat from the pipework? Well, here's the sciencey bit. The temperature drop from the flow to the return of the heat pump is only affected by the flow rate produced by our system pump. Once we're inside the thermal envelope, our heat demand is our heat demand. If the heat loss from our rooms within that thermal envelope is eight kilowatts, we will require the flow rate for eight kilowatts, which would be 23 liters per minute for a heat pump. If we start emitting our eight kilowatts of heat from the pipework as well as the radiators, we will still need the same flow rate, but the flow temperature would need adjusting for the added emitter surface area. Here's a simplified example. If we had an eight kilowatt system with all of the pipework perfectly insulated up to the radiators and 45 degrees C flow delivered to the radiator and 40 degrees C returned from the radiator, you would now need 23 liters per minute flow rate from the system pump as per the mass flow rate formula. For more information on mass flow rate, watch our video, Shortcut to Heating Genius. That will give you the details on the maths for this next bit. And let's assume we've designed this property for 20 degrees C room temperature. We then decided to remove all of the insulation from the pipework within the thermal envelope. In theory, we could lose a degree before reaching the radiator and a degree on the way back and a 38 degrees C return. Now the pump speed must have remained the same as the delta T between the flow and return has increased. If we then put this seven degree C drop through the mass flow rate formula, you can see that for 23 liters per minute flow rates, we must now be putting 11 kilowatts into the building. Now you can't create or destroy energy and we only need eight kilowatts to maintain 20 degrees C in this property. So the room temperature will increase. If the pump speed actually responded and automatically increased to maintain our five degree differential from flow to return, it would have to ramp up to say 32 liters per minute. And you can see by using the same formula that you would still be putting in 11 kilowatts, but probably more as now your mean water temperature is higher as it now includes the pipework. Looking at those things in comparison to the heat loss that will input more energy and that isn't included in the mass flow rate calculation. For that calculation, either do the Heat Geek course or watch our video, Why Not to Zone Heat Pumps. In reality, the heat pump probably won't be able to ramp up this high though. And if the max output of the heat pump was eight kilowatts, what would happen is that as you remove the insulation, the flow rate would stay the same and the heat pump flow and return temperatures would drop, maintaining that five degree differential between them, and the room would stay perfectly at 20 degrees C. But as it's now running at lower flow temperatures, the heat pump's efficiency would increase. If your heat pump does have more capacity than eight kilowatts, you would simply lower your flow temperature to limit the heat input into the building. Now, if your concern is that some areas might be too warm or too cool by leaving pipework uninsulated, we have a specific video for that, which may make you question how you balance heating systems. If that's not out right now, it will be very soon. So should we be accounting for this in our heating system designs? Well, first off, our example just here was quite exaggerated. I wouldn't necessarily try to include pipework emissions in your heating system design. Calculate using the radiator only and any small gains from uninsulated pipework will be an extra bonus. Like when the nearest radiator size is 200 watts larger than you need or underfloor heating pipe spaces are closer together than needed. So there's no regulation specifically for this, only guidance from a few different sources. For example, the guidance from SIBSI states, Energy efficiency standards require that heating pipes should be insulated unless their heat loss contributes to the useful heating requirement of a room or space. Totally agree. Taking that further, if there is a possibility that the space they pass through or adjoining space to the void they pass through might be maintained at temperatures different to those they are supplying, insulating the pipes should be considered if possible. As stated in the Domestic Building Services Compliant Guide 2018, reasonable provision should be made to limit the heat losses from pipes. Basically, insulate them if they're going through a space that you've zoned off to keep at a colder temperature. And as we suggest to design systems for minimal zoning and minimal setbacks, we totally agree once again. So when should you insulate? Now, having said all of that, there are a handful of times when you should insulate your pipework 
within the thermal envelope. You should lag or insulate your pipework if it's gonna result in too high a thermal output for a space. For example, if you ran some 35 millimeter primary pipework for a well insulated corridor, that could end up being very hard to control the heat. This would be much more common in commercial properties, but you'd also zone in commercial properties a lot more. Lagging pipework is sometimes helpful to prevent noise and ticking within systems, uh, as the pipework expands. However, this doesn't really happen with weather compensated systems or steady state heating. And lastly, please do always insulate and sleeve through brick walls. So in conclusion, as we said at the beginning, pipework that contributes only towards heating within the thermal envelope does not need insulating. You cannot keep the space between your ground floor ceiling and your first floor floor cooler than the temperature of the rooms above or below. So if we have to heat those areas with radiators indirectly anyway, and the radiators have to work at an even fractionally higher flow temperature to do so, why not use our heating pipework system as a free kind of in-wall and underfloor additional emitter? Run the system at a lower temperature if possible and collect our free efficiency gain. And even if there is no gain, at least you don't have to bother fitting unnecessary insulation. If you've got any feedback, please drop it in the comments, um, like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.